everyone, my name is Mitz, and here we are back with Turnabout Substitution. Things are not looking too great for the judge here, as both a cursory look over the crime scene and some people involved, uh, most certainly um, uh, <coughs> Mike Meekins, uh, inco incompetency personified. Uh, judge apparently was literally the only person sighted the crime besides a guard that was knocked out. Worse yet, the judge came at the behest of someone unknown, maybe it was Robert Erlenmeyer or really the true culprit, who signed a letter, somehow to Von Karma did with Yana Yogi, to dress up as an asylum guard with a gun to go and talk to Robert Erlenmeyer. And there's literally nothing else. Since the since the victim, quote unquote, is literally someone who would have many grudges, being a serial killer in Arl, literally it could be anyone by this point. And the only thing we have going for us now is learning more about the mysterious bus killings and to go and talk to Paul Strings. There's not be many leads, but I'm a, any lead at this point is a good lead, right? So let's make our way down to Mr. Paul Strings. Okay, where would he be? Chief Justice's office. Man, one of these days, Paul, you're gonna you change your profession to become a Chief Justice. It'll fit your title, fit your name. Supreme Court Building Chief Justice Strings Office. Oh, wow. Wow, I can't believe I'm actually in the office of Chief Justice. Man, now I'm getting all I'm getting all fuzzy and cozy just seeing the, the snow in the, out the window right there. Ah, oh, the atmosphere. Is that a bus statue? Calling it right now, he's the killer. Obviously, mysterious bus killings. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day it'll be your office. Yeah, change your job already. Nah, no chance. Honestly, I don't have the time to think about my career right now. <laughs> You're on a case, but I'm gonna uh, go off. Anyway, he's obviously not. Sounds like a perfect time to take a quick look around. You had the right thoughts. <laughs> yeah, of course, no one's gonna blame us for searching the office of the highest ranking judge in the country without any kind of warrant. It's not like it's illegal or anything. Can you dare give me those eyes? There's no way I'm defending you if you get arrested. Hey, you're kind of cute when you're mad, Apollo. Oh, don't you dare test me. Come on, just. Just looking won't hurt. There's no way you're not defending me. Uh, yeah, meh. Yeah, you're right. Me and me can investigate? I knew you wouldn't say no to me, Apollo. That, um, uh, oh, wow, okay then. I remember the defense thing. Too late, mate. Please grow up, Rhea. Well, I guess there's no harm looking around a bit. Alrighty then. Like, I just honestly love the view and just the whole look of this place. Ah. Oh. oh, look at the second view. Huh. Nice. Coolio. I guess we start from right. It's a bookcase. Ah, law books. Now that's a horrid sight. You, uh, okay, like you wanted to become a legal aid, so I'm, uh, okay. You remind me of ex boyfriends. You erase them from your memory because you're scared it might come back to haunt you. I might still bury everything that makes me think of my ex boyfriends. You sure, like, bring them up a lot now. Except the aforementioned boyfriends, of course. <laughs> The Chief Justice should do the same, really. Do you think he has has a lot of dates? After reading so many law books at school, you'd figure he'd want to throw a little book-burning party. Oh my. Uh, sorry to bring your metaphor. Simile. Simile. But these are most definitely not law books. Homer's Iliad, Aesop's Fables, Plato's Republics, Sophocles, Oedi Oedipus Rex. Oh, huh. I guess we could say he's a Greek geek. Wait, are you telling me that whole, like, in speaking landline was not him being pretentious? Well, he's still pretentious, but he's a pretentious nerd, okay? <laughs> I guess we could say you're I guess we could say you're stupid. Just because I didn't take Latin in, in school doesn't mean you should make fun of me. Why well, I did, I took three years, but I completely forgot about all of them. <laughs> I guess. Like, literally. Just doctors, like, having to take Latin, just... <laughs> For, what, what would you actually need to learn Latin for, for doctors at this point? Like... <laughs> I can't even remember this point, but like, <laughs> learn Latin to like know how to read and write. I'm a, a dead language, so you can read and write your own illegible scripture for prescriptions. Nice. The chief did strike me as the self-important type, but come on. Oh my god, is that his, is, a, is it a bust himself? Oh god. What kind of narcissistic prig exhibits a bust of himself in his own office? 
You're so right, except you're wrong. This has nothing to do with strings whatsoever. It's actually a bust of an unhelmeted King Leonidas. Huh. Leonidas? You mean, like, the chocolate? Wait, what? Leonidas chocolate? There's a lot of references at a few points I'm, I'm probably going over my head. The whole Father Elder Elderberries, I think it's probably going over my head now thinking about it as a reference, but I can't think of what this is. I need to try to pass yourself off as a Greek god. Who said he, the Apollo was? This <laughs> Who said he was? Nice window. Such a sad, melancholic window. Well, I mean, it's kind of nice. Well, I mean, if you don't want to uh, become sad and, uh, and depresso, then I'm uh, just don't be in this room too often in Christmas time. Uh, that'd be the first way to get out of the funk. The seasonal depression. What exactly about this window is melancholic? Well, I mean, it's wide open. I think it's more of the weather outside, but the window itself... Don't know. I think about it. It's Christmas. It's snowing. It's snowing! You could be snowmanning or snow throwing, but here you are, illegaling and lying and stuff. That's quite an impressive number of verbs you just invented. <laughs> I know. I wonder. Who needs snow when you're already snowed under with work? Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one, actually. That's not a very good pun. No, that was a way better than pun than Cafe Teary I. Way better than that. I know. Then act like it's a better pun than pretend, pretend for my sake. Okay, same thing over there. Thought it was a desk, but it's just the window again. Got this no check to make sure, like, you already read through it. Can't speed through faster. Snow under work. It's good. It's still a good joke. Uh, we can't look at the desk. We can't look at the couch. Look at the nice carpeting. Perpet. Uh, velvetly. <laughs> Lavender scent. <laughs> so, okay, so here's a giant plant. Okay, we're not gonna- we're gonna see his version of Charlie, I see. Okay, gotcha. A bunch of, like, different, like, well, huh? Different treasure, but we can only look at this. An ancient-looking golden plate. Maybe the Chief Justice is Mormon? Golden plate. I haven't, like, dabbled too much long into, like, I guess, Mormonism, but I feel like I should, at least a tiny bit, for another game. I'm debating going through later on. I should probably look into that a bit more. No idea about it, though. Hmm. Or maybe we should just read what it says before making assumptions. Nah, making assumptions is all the craze these days. That's what I just did. The bust. <laughs> 480 is a, re is a real push. He's a culprit. Uh-huh. Did Salmonella write this? <laughs> what could that possibly mean? Wait, did you just say 480? Yeah, what about it? Wait, Han, Leonidas, 480, 480 Leonidas, Thurman File, uh, Pteridos, Pteridosimo Symbida, Avesta, I see, Chromopla Chromo Chromoplasm, Apollo, you're smarter than that, uh, I'm not that smart, I don't know anything of Greek legends on this end. The Battle of Thermophile, I, I can't even spell that, I can't even pronounce that right, was when the Spartan army led by, was was when the Spartan army led by King Leonidas fought against the Persians and occurred in 480 BC. Are you a history buff? This can't be a coincidence. The golden plate, the bust, they're all connected somehow. Huh. Let me see the inscription again. 480 is a real pushed. He's a culprits, okay? <laughs> Who's the culprits? A real pushed? He's a real pushover. I see. Now, this is just not a threat. There are too many spelling mistakes to begin with. It's an anagram. Oh, God, not this again. What did Mrs. Graham say this time? God damn it, Sigma! <laughs> Best joke in that game. An anagram? The gods really are fascists, don't you think? Sometimes the greatest mysteries can be solved by a mere wordplay. Wordplay? Best play. Play of words. Plesitarchus. That's what we're supposed to read. Plesitarchus? Incidentally, Plesitarchus was King Leonidas' son. So that's it? That's your big mystery? We now know the answer to life, the universe, and everything, and it's 480. No, minus 60. <laughs> I'm sure Chambers would be relieved to hear that when he's on death row. Well, someone went through the trouble of hiding his true meaning. Then my guess is there must be a secret behind this golden plate. And when there's a secret, there's bound to be a clue. Where well, there's a will, there is a way. But Will Powers is not here, so there's no way. Go to play added to court record. Okay. What?
Where's the music coming from? What's well, hell of an entrance music I'm coming from? Paul Strings about to waltz through into the front doors all ham-fistedly. A ringtone, perhaps? That's way too loud to be a ringtone, at least on my end. Rhea, what are you doing? Rhea! I'm pressing charges! Rhea, behind you! The bust! D d ah! Hello? You there? What? If you want to pretend you're not there, you don't answer the damn phone. It's as simple as that. Wait, what? Wait, so the bus is actually a phone? It's a bus phone. <laughs> now listen good, because I'm only going to say it once. I want my goddamn money, and I want it now. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow's too freaking morrow. Now. I did my part of the deal. Now it's your turn. Or else. Well. What the hell was that? It was a bus phone. Didn't you just say that in your own thought bubble? The Chief Justice blackmailed? Well, wasn't the first time exactly, but I'm, uh, for money? Hmm. You did his part of the bargain. Bust added to court record. Okay, play now bust. Uh, you're now busted, uh, Paul Strings will blackmail. Uh, anyway. I don't care much for the atmosphere here. Let's return to the agency. Okay, we're never gonna talk to Paul Strings ever again. Okay, I see. Already then. So, if we can't see Paul Strings until way later, where should we go then? Oh. I'll sue you, and then I'll sue the prosecutor, and then the prosecutor's prosecutor, and then the prosecutor's prosecutor's aide? You don't know who you're dealing with, okay? Well, oh, it's just you. Wait. Hi? Have we met? No, but you look like my dog. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Not that I'm the kind of guy who has conversation with his dog because he has no one else to talk to. I'm gonna let that slide because, like, we talked to our, like, we talked to, like, our pets like that, but, like, what do you mean Paul looks like your dog with the horns? What kind of over, what, over, what kind of cartoonish dog do you have? Do you muse up the, your pet's hair? How do you bathe it? <laughs> That's just not true, at least not on Fridays. TGI. <laughs> TMI. Right. Anyway, you and you anyone important, or can I go back to work now? Uh, okay. Isn't the exact same uniform of, um, oh. Oh, yeah, the play and all that, but, like, isn't it the same, like, it's literally the same exact color. Oh. Wait, are you the guard that fainted, like, right next to the judge? Huh. Well, let me look at this over again. Was found in his office, the inscription says, 480 is real pushed. He's a culprit. According to Rhea, it's an anagram for Cleotarchus, King Leonidas' son. Hmm. Well, the whole thing for, like, is real push, he's a culprit, all the way to Pleocardus. I guess I can fit in there. There must be a lot of different letters in there, though. Hmm. Then there was the bus. Bus of King Leonidas, also a sophisticate phone. Strings received a threatening call from question mark, question mark, question mark. The most dastardly of all people. We need to arrest him soon. <laughs> I, we're Mr. Chambers' lawyers. Oh, that old rascal, I saw him do it, you know. <laughs> oh, we finally meet. Whatever your name is, who I so, who also conveniently witnessed the murder. Oh, too bad he's not going to the loony bin. Fisher. He and, he and Bud, blood, blood, bloodthirsty first would have been great cellmates. Bud, bloodthirsty. You as lawyers, you say? We have nothing to talk about. Please, give us five minutes. Give us five minutes and I'll give my phone number. Do you do that to everyone? We'll continue because it's actually kind of funny for me. Rhea, what the? She does it to everyone. She's kind of already doing it on you, Apollo, so don't worry about it. It's She's working. Okay, she's working. She's getting information. Don't worry about it. Easy woman, huh? They're all the same. All right, best of luck. I'm going to tell you anything. Named Sean O'Fisher, by the way. Sean O'Fisher. Another normalish sounding name. I miss the pun names now. Or just the weird the wordplay. Like like Glen Elg, that palindrome. I want my wordplay back. I'm a prison guard, so all I can give you is three three minutes and thirty-four second stops. That's what's Ozzy's. I'm an ostrich. Richard's gonna escape, see? When he's gonna escape Why isn't anyone keeping an eye on him then in the prison?
I keep telling him monster just can't fly, but he won't listen. Every week I have to save him, that's why I can't... Mr. Fisher, I don't like to be the bird of ill omen, but your time's up. Wait, that doesn't mean he's not in danger, is he? Wait, what? Where is his... Oh, okay. No, nope, his cell's on the first floor. Then I guess we can have ourselves a real conversation now. Don't tell me you and Mike Meekins are the only people who are in the prison if you're that worried about them. Suppose so. Okay. All right then. So your name is Sean O'Fisher, right? Do you fish for more, for more fishes? Me, I'm the underdog. You know, when you was a kid, there was this job you really wanted to do. That would be lawyer, like Phoenix Wright. Oh, <laughs> childhood dreams. But there's also this job you already knew you wanted to do even for a trillion dollars. Well, I'm the guy who does that job. I've been through it all: dustman, road sweeper, toilet cleaner, you name it. I'm getting a hint of vibes of Maggie Bird. Want a different way? This is occupational, <laughs> occupational woes instead. I'm the Horatio Kane of junk jobs. There's a lot of references, and I'm glossing over all of them. And I feel so, so sad about that fact. Wow, I do not remember the the game having this many references. Wow, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. But just because your job stinks don't mean that you gotta stink at it too. You gotta work hard so you can be proud of yourself. Never complain. That's what I always tell youngsters. Oh no. Well, you gotta admit, that job's even worse than all the others combined. Okay. I I'm a pro, but that career's all about cons. Well, I mean, you're dealing with them, uh, like insane people, I guess, as asylum, so I'm, uh, you're a professional dealing with convicts. <laughs> There's a salary, and then there's the conditions, and then there's Meekins. <laughs> I'm not complaining. It sounds like you're complaining a lot. How about you write, make a journal about all of this <laughs> and send it through the mail, the complaints box. It's right over the trash can over there. <laughs> I'm not in denial. You haven't said a single word about this, Apollo. Why are you in denial? It's just ever since my life left me, things have been tough. <laughs> Hold on, I should go off and like if this is like the best thing to do it like I'm so sad that I'm uh, my whole house burned down Someone hacked into my all my, my personal information. They stole all my money. My electricity's out. I have no food but Anyway, can I support a dollar or two? I just want to get something McDonald's <laughs> Oh boy, better change the subject. Oh my god. Why? <laughs> why? I was on duty last night. I was in charge of keeping an eye on Erlen Meyer. See, Erlen Meyer, like, my first thought just now, just Erlen Meyer, like, hot dogs, like Erlen Meyer wieners. Like, <laughs> okay. That's the only thing I could think of in terms of, like, any kind of wordplay or reference or anything like that, but I don't quite see it. <laughs> oh, of course, I know he's a serial killer and all, but looking at yourself is a piece of cake. You know, they ever moves, that's why. He's always standing there, staring at the damn ceiling. Okay. So let's take it easy, drinking a beer, that sort of thing. Oh my. And there came Meekins. Mike frickin' Meekins. I'm telling you, that kid's trouble. Behind him was Chambers, dressed in a prison guard uniform. Obviously. Meekins, that fool, told me that our boss, another fool, had ordered Chambers, yet another fool, to check the cell in person so I had to let him in, sold my pride, blah, 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 you get the picture. Oh my god. You're quite a mouthy person, but I love it. This is fun. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about you. <laughs> oh. Did you notice anything suspicious about the defendant? Oh, of course I have my doubts, but who would have thought that old wreck was going to pull the trigger? It's not my fault the creep died. I know that much. All of a sudden, Chambers pointed the weapon at Erlenmeyer and shot him in the forehead. Bang! And before I could say, please don't hit me over the head with your gun, he hit me over the head with his gun. Bam. That's what happened next. Well, you're going to have to ask unconscious me. I see. we got to get a hypnotist. The morning guard called the cops and the rest is history. Oh my gosh, we're not out, out that long. Okay, wow. So, is that all? Of course it's not all. I'm with the prosecution. What do you expect? <laughs> Why do I always get punished for asking questions? Because you're you, Apollo. And plus the devilish horns. You you don't have a good ap good appearance for many people. <laughs> the hair is good, though. The hair is really good. Nice hairdo. <laughs> I guess this is about all we're going to get out of him. <gasps> uh, come again? Well, she just uh, just screamed. Like, do you want me to try say that again? <laughs> Apollo, remember that wig we found on the floor of the asylum? 
think I know where I've seen it before. Come with me. What? December 26, DK and co funeral directors. DK. <laughs> Hi, Donkey Kong. <laughs> Rhea Ritz's office. Oh! Ta da! Behold my office! I think you meant to say living room. Well, yeah, well, I kind of live here, so. Okay, so living room slash um, uh, office. Uh, nice. L little section over there, the desk is the office, and this entire room is a living room. The living room for funeral directors. The dead is everywhere. Anyway, that's not what we came here for. Well, just hang on a second, will you? Hmm. There, take a good, hard look at this newspaper clip. Know things familiar? That's a picture of Robert Erlenmeyer, isn't it? Hmm, yes, I do like the turtleneck, though. It kind of sort of reminds me of, like, um, uh, Drew Misham in a way. Kind of. Hmm. Maybe his, like, his, like, character profiles and, like, you know, general, like, sprites are mod after him. Hmm. Talk about a creepy-looking sociopath. He just has a big nose, okay? <gasps> hair! Forehead! Don't, don't discriminate against people's other hair. Like, people already hate your hair, apparently, as much as, as, as anyone else. Apologies. <laughs> Aha! So you figured out, then! So, wait, so are you saying Erlenmeyer is bald? Like that guard? <laughs> <laughs> literally, the wig is literally belonging to the guard instead. Don't worry about it. I'll oh, see. So figured it out then. You're right. It was Erlen Meyer who dropped his wig near the crime scene. Wait, is Erlen Meyer actually just wearing a wig? The question now is, what does it mean? To be frank, I have no idea. Wait, who are you? Your name is Frank now. Where's Rhea? What have you done with her? <laughs> Me neither. Wig updating the court record. Every time I'm feeling blue, I read this article. So you can feel bluer? Uh, honestly, like, don't, don't knock it, okay? I get depressed, but like, and read lots of uh, depressing stuff. It sort of makes me feel better, okay? It's comforting. Comfort shows and all that. <laughs> it reminds me that there are worse things in life than being fed up with work. Uh, there's also that too, yes. Our world is depressing enough as it is, Apollo. I should be the one to fill these dark souls with light, don't you think? Well, anyway, since you're here, I might as well show you around. Sure, we certainly deserved a little break. Okay, then, I guess we're gonna get a quick look around this office place. Huh. Well, this is actually really nice. Well, I'm, uh, I say this with um, uh, all all the bias because blue's my favorite color. The curtains and everything, it's all, it's great. Oh. What was that? You can look at the pictures? The man holding your hand in this picture, he's... Oh, Nathan, my older brother. You know, the one who's brutally murdered. <laughs> you just said that so casually. Okay, then. I probably shouldn't have brought this up. It's alright, Apollo. I can handle the truth. Do you think you could tell me more about him? Oh. Okay, then. Oh, boy. This is going to go... Oh, boy. Oh. Nathan was 25 when he was taken from me. From her family. He had everything going for him. He was young smart and handsome. He was a skilled computer engineer. A bit of a loner, but he needed affection. He deserved affection. It was Tuesday. I went to visit him as usual. I rang, but no one responded. The door was left open, so I decided to wait for him inside. As soon as I saw Charles Darwin on the music sheet, I knew I'd never see him again. Hmm. Nathan had hated having his picture taken, you know. Oh. I couldn't find a picture of both of us together, so I had to invent one. Still, a false memory is better than no memory at all, wouldn't you agree? Wow, she's good. I could have sworn it was a real photograph. Photo of Rhea and Nathan enter the court record. The whole way. Okay, then. Oh, excuse me. Apollo, is everything alright? They said your flight landed three hours ago, but we couldn't find you anywhere in the airport. Whoops, I completely forgot about them. Wow, your priorities are askew. Well, I, uh, kind of didn't catch the plane, so... What? Wait, 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 I can explain. I told Mr. Wright everything about our case. I see. Well, judging from the facts of the case, the answer should be fairly obvious by now. Eat the judge. I didn't know the true criminal is. What? Oh, oh no, not again. John, 
The killer's name is John. John Smith? Or is it? Oh boy. God damn it. Like this is the old the old internet humor. Yet so you know this game was made very early on. Anyway, it's lunchtime. Apparently there's a restaurant in town that makes good Burgundian sugar, so we're off. It's not a dish. Well, eating pure sugar cubes is nice, okay? Just don't overdose on it. You know who to call if you're in trouble. I wouldn't quite put it that way. Phone add to the court record. Okay, look at that! My own phone is added to evidence! We're just putting everything in there, aren't we? <laughs> Literally everything. Okay. Well, sounds like a perfect time to resume our investigation, doesn't it? Oh, I literally just looked at the photo and just talked to you about it? Okay, then. Yeah. Like, I, I actually want to, like, know about more about you. I thought, actually, in this instant, we'd learn about the mysterious bus killing a bit more. Because, like, hmm. Because this is a question that came up to my head, like, honestly, like, on the second episode, I didn't have a clear time to voice it. But, like, well, it makes sense for the Ace Turning universe, but, like, it, this, it seems, like, unheard of to, like, arrest someone for... A crime, like when there's like no evidence for it, like the mysterious bus killings. From the sounds of it, like the bodies were gone, like everywhere. Like there's no bodies that were found, and yet Erlen Meyer was arrested for it. Hmm. Well, my next thought was literally just about Erlen Meyer, like new things that the police, like the police, they were told anyone, so they're keeping secret. But the, like I guess the either the serial killer, quote unquote, or the serial kidnapper. You know, all that. Hmm. But if, like, so many people, like, quote-unquote kidnapped, I, and if they haven't been found, uh, yeah, they're probably dead by this point. And if, like, everyone, in thinking about it more, if, like, if Nathan, like, Emma, Rhea's brother here, was, like, the same thing with the M.O., like, of, uh, like, of those photographs, like, forming a bus in the ground, the signed Charles Darwin sheet, like, they all left him in, like, I guess the, the, I guess, quote-unquote, victims' houses. So, hmm. I'm just wondering if there was even, like, a way to actually, like, arrest someone for that kind of crime when you can't really prove there was a crime. It just feels weird. It feels very weird. Hmm. Hmm. I guess this case does in a sort of similar way too, but I guess even if like I'm uh even if like I'm a Erlen Meyer definitely like isn't dead, he's still out of prison. Well out of the asylum, so I'm uh that's a whole another can of worms right there, so I'm uh I guess even if like we prove that Erlen Meyer is definitely like alive or dead, then I'm uh there's still gonna be um uh consequences uh he's dead uh judge you murdered uh Erlen Meyer's alive then I'm uh where is he how did you let him escape ah! and all that all that jazz hmm yeah but like I want to like I need to know more about the mysterious bus killings top of my head that's the one thing I can't quite recall about the the smaller details besides that so you're being a funeral director and all is it a vocation or just a job I'm curious Vocation? No, not really. I actually studied law at the university. Oh, so it's a Phoenix Wright situation. Just um, uh, I studied art, but then I want to do law to help a friend, and now I still, and now I'm both a lawyer, and now I can talk, talk degrees about modernist art and architecture. <laughs> you studied law and became a funeral director. And now you're back to basics. You think about it, I could have been one of Mr. Wright's partners, but then a career opportunity presented itself. I'll be honest with you, Apollo. My dad pulled some strings to get me the position. Still, I'm a woman of man's job. I had to work twice as hard to prove myself. You'd think by now I'd be used to seeing the dead bodies. When it's someone close to you, you're always like a virgin, touched the very first time. That's a weird play to put in this. Okay. And now it's gonna be thinking. Is your brother's life worth more than your brother's life? Is your brother's life worth more than their brother's life? Yeah, I know. Way to ruin the mood, huh? You want some chocolate? Oh, yes, please, Rhea. If you say so. Mmm, chocolate. Okay, then. You priorities are skewed, okay. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh. Is there anything else to look around here? Oh, 
laptop? I didn't know you were good with computers. I'm pretty sure in this day and age you should be. Well, I mean, this is the. F Never mind, this is Phoenix Right Times. Um, uh, everything is, like, low quality, even though it's in the future. <laughs> really, Apollo? That's like saying, I didn't know you were good at shoelacing. I can only do. I can only do one. I can only do the shoelace knot. I can't do any other knots. I'm sorry. What's the big deal with shoelacing? Cause tying knots and all that. So what do you like to do in your computer? Oh, you know the usual stuff: chatting on the internet, creating scuba diving simulators, hacking into Pentagon servers, that sort of thing. Ah, I see. Liar! There's no way she knows how to chat on the internet. <laughs> Okay, back with the dramatic music. Okay, I'm, uh, please simmer down there, <laughs> atmosphere. It's not that dull and, like, dreary right now, nothing like that. Look, <laughs> you see these curtains? They're blue. This means the author wanted to show off how depressed, depressed the, main, the character who lives here is, or just the curtains were fucking blue. <laughs> oh, that stupid meme of, of literary criticism and, analyze, and analysis always, like, it tickles my funny bone. Because it's stupid. <laughs> I'll analyze it how I want to. <laughs> Is there even think anything else? Oh yeah, we got some new stuff in there though. Well, the wigs are updated. Belonged to Robert Erlenmeyer. The victim dropped it near the crime scene. So like, like, the culprit like carried the victim out. Well, he, oh I forgot he was wounded and all that. Like, hmm. So like he dropped it in a rush to get out, carrying Erlenmeyer. Hmm. The rush not get back. Photo of Rhea and Nathan was found at Rhea's office. It's actually a fake. Hmm. So, my cell phone. Contact list Phoenix Thalcia Trucy. Check. Ah, uh, this is the edition I was I heard all about. This is one thing I've not seen a lot of people actually utilize. All these different like phone conversations. Hey Apollo, how's it going? As good as it usually do goes. Uh -huh, I see. Anything new? Not really. Things seem to be coming together piece by piece, although there are a few strange things. Tell me more. Well, the biggest thing is that Erlenmeyer's corpse is missing. You should probably look into that then. How do you find a missing corpse? Or a missing... yeah, all that. Well, I guess, like, the... well, there was the witness, but, hmm. Yeah, he did say... oh, I completely forgot about that. He did say he... You saw, like, I guess, a death happen, huh? Hmm. But the missing blood and all that, hmm. You should probably get a look into that then. I was thinking that too. Oh, and Apollo? Yeah? Need your message of the beep. Wha- What? <laughs> I just have one thing to say to you, you stupid old man. <laughs> that was literally just all one big voicemail. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my, I want to go through all these. Trucy! Hello? Hey, Trucy. Oh, hi, Polly! I can't believe you missed our flight! Yeah, I know, but now I'm tied up in this case of Judge, so I can't exactly leave. I know, Daddy told me. I still wish you were here with us. Or at least if I was home to help you. I mean, do you really think you can handle a case without me? Uh, well, I was gonna say, like, Apollo managed to do like, the first case of himself, but I'm, uh, that was both Christoph Gavin and Phoenix Wright helping, so I'm, uh, you're useless, Apollo. I think we find this one time. Plus, a woman named Rhea Witz has helped me. Huh? Really? Yeah, she judges friend and knows as much as I do that he's innocent. Judges your friend, huh? An old lady would definitely compliment your personality best. She judges friend, but she's only 23. Like I said, an old lady. Trucy's 15 going on 5. <laughs> anyway, you don't know what you're missing over here. Oh yeah? What? We went to an art museum. Ah, nice. The sights and sounds. Well, Phoenix is gonna have a blast there. <laughs> there was some giant statue. The Alpha Reed or something. <laughs> God damn it. I I investigations, references. But Daddy told me about this really interesting case it was involved in. R really? A case? How'd it go? I don't remember. I wasn't paying attention. I was too absorbed in their display of silk hats and cloaks. Uh, I see. Well, if you had come, you probably could have heard the story yourself. You're also missing a lot of time with Mommy. Right, Thalsa. It's weird to think of her as Mommy. She's baking milk and cookies. 
cookies. Oh no, you're definitely missed out. You probably should have taken. You probably should have kept your phone on silent. And actually went to the plane ride. All this trouble to miss out on, on cookies and art and case stories. <laughs> and she reads me bedtime stories every night. Wouldn't I be a little too old for that? Heck, isn't she a little too old for that? Shush, you're never too old for that. Especially since like Trucy like never like taught her mom or since the kids. So I'm uh, yeah, I don't blame her. She taught me how to ride a bike. Didn't you already know that? Yeah, but we figured it would be a great way to make up for lost time. <laughs> okay, that's great. If you say so. Anyway, I'm glad to hear you're doing fine, but I think I need to get back to the case now. Oh, right. Win quickly so you're getting over here already. Right. Will do. See you soon. Yes, bye, Polly. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm actually kind of curious how like, they go with Falcia. Never s Huh. Hello? Hi, uh, um, it's Apollo. Hello, Apollo, how are you? Fine, of course. Uh, how are you, uh... Call me whatever you like, Apollo. Mom, Mother, Thalsa, even Lemoir, if you feel the most comfortable that way. Um, Thalassa's fine. <laughs> I, I can't figure out how to pronounce her name. And would calling you something besides Apollo make you feel more comfortable? No, Apollo is fine. So I heard from Phoenix that you can't come over here because you got a case. Oh, yeah. The judge from both Machi's trial and Vera Misham's. He's been accused of, mur of murder. <laughs> him? I admit I do not know him personally, but from his conduct during those trials, I can't imagine he'd do anything illegal. Least of all, murder. While well, he was blacked by my red white all years ago. Who's red white? Uh, don't worry about that. I know, that's why I took the case. But things don't look very great here. The victim is a serial killer who killed the judge's brother. Hmm. Really? Does that mean the crime took place in a prison? Actually, a prison mental asylum. I'm not too sure I like you snooping around a place filled with mentally unstable criminals. Don't worry, we got him, uh... We don't have anything on hand to protect ourselves, but we fine. I'll be fine, really. Fine is your middle name, exactly. That's how fine you are. Just be careful. Make sure you stay with the guard at all times. Oh, no. If she knew him, I'm sure she'd be saying the exact opposite. <laughs> anyway, I think I need to get back to my investigation now. Oh, okay. Good luck, Apollo. Thanks. <laughs> okay, that was kind of sweet. Okay. <laughs> well, there's a good time to leave things off here. There's actually quite a few... A lot of things we got from that. I was, I kind of completely forgot about that. And the fun conversations are quite nice. I was not expecting it to be like so um, uh, more comedic and all that. Like, well, I guess I should have, but like, wow. I don't know what to expect from the, the phone calls. I don't think I've ever seen anyone go through them, like, during other Let's Plays and just all that. I think this is literally the only first time I'm actually playing through it physically, honestly. It's, it's an interesting feeling, actually. Hmm. Ah, uh, the warm, fuzzy, cozy feelings. It's all coming back to me again. Ah, uh, but we're not done with the investigation yet, just yet. We need to figure out more about him, uh, the, but Erlenmeyer and all that. Like, where exactly would his body be and all that? Hmm. I'm still hung up on the whole fact of whether, like, Erlenmeyer would be, like, dead or alive. Hmm. Because, like, well, of course, we had no verification. And, like, hmm. When it did say, like, I'm, uh... The judge, like, shot Ellen Meyer dead, but, like, was quickly knocked out. Don't know if I would truly believe that, so... There's something weird going afoot. Maybe someone who else does not look... Who actually looks like the judge and actually pretend to be the judge with a wig... Is the one who killed with the uniform and all that. Don't know how else the judge got there, though, but so I'm, uh... Maybe so, but that, yeah, he like Fisher was there as a guard during the death. So there's that, unless someone snuck past. Hmm. Because the guard uniform and the gun, I'm assuming would have the keys and all that. All that, yeah. If not, then breaking to the desk. Yeah. Either way, it sounds very much plausible. Hmm. That th that. Well, obviously, like Sean Fisher's lying or mistaken at some level, but not. 
don't know exactly what. Maybe his head got hit so hard, and he and his his old stories of being complaining all mixed together, confused in his own head to get more, some more excitement in his life. Besides the dreary, dreary life that he has, talking to his dog and his wife left him. Sad times. But I'm pretty sure we're, that's gonna be, not going to be the last time we're going to see him. Whether we see him again in the investigation here or in the trial, who knows? But we'll find out all in due time for next time. So, what a fun time watching as I am playing this. Hope we see you next time, what time may be. And I'll hope you a fantastic day.